Hi, my name is Marianne and I'm doing this video for all of you out there who've said to me that you admire me, that I inspire you and I'm your hero. I don't think I'm doing anything fantastic. I'm traveling around Australia by myself with my dog and it's just something that comes naturally to me. So for all of you out there that believe in me, this is for you. As you watch the video, you're going to see photos behind me and there are places that I've been to. I've had many ups and downs in my life and I could let them defeat me but I choose to live my life and be grateful for every day, for everything that I've given. I had a good childhood, we didn't want for anything, but I also had mental and physical abuse. I've made mistakes in my life, but I've learnt from them. I did things that I regret and I've hurt people that I shouldn't. I've had business failures, I've had marriage breakdowns and I chose to rise above all that and not let it defeat me and define who I am took myself on a journey of self-discovery to find myself again. Uh, my marriage broke down three years ago and I was totally devastated. We'd worked together in the business for the first seven years and everything was great. But my ex changed overnight and became a very uncaring, nasty person and the verbal abuse made me feel totally worthless. We continued on for five years and we still had great moments in that time but there was more fighting and more hurtful words than there were good times. I was working of a daytime in the transport company and for the last two years um, I was also running a restaurant. It was my love and my passion. It was a lounge bar so I could get up and sing and make people happy. I was so busy trying to keep everything together and everyone employed and make sure everything was all right that I didn't realize what was happening to me. It took a really good close friend of mine, my best friend Joanne, to uh, bring me back to some reality I guess. Uh, one night after coming home from work and um, she said something to me and I just snapped. It was something very trivial and um, she turned around and said to me, you are lucky that I love you because right now I don't really like you. Everyone's walking on eggshells around you, just so stressed all the time. Your marriage to is toxic. It's going to destroy you. Where's the Marianne we all love? You know, the fun Marianne, the happy Marianne that enjoyed life and loved life. And she uh, said that and went, that's it, I'm going. And off she went. I thought, fine, off you go then. I don't care. And um, I poured myself a glass of red wine and went out the back to sit on my old church pew. It's uh, a church pew that was been in my family for a very long time. I used to sit on it every day with my pa having a cup of tea. And I still have very fond memories of him. And when I need guidance, I'd go out there and sit and look up the stars and pa helped me. What am I supposed to be doing? I'm thinking, what's she on about? She's got no idea. And then... I actually went into the bathroom and I was washing my hands and I looked in the mirror and I thought, oh my God, who is this woman looking back at me? I did not even recognize myself. I was overweight, I was stressed to the max, I had dark circles under my eyes and it was one of those light bulb moments that you think, who is this person? I didn't know who I was anymore. And it was that moment I started to cry and I went and rang Joe and I said, look, I am so, so sorry for everything that I said and everything that I've done. Can you forgive me? and of course be my bestie, um, she did. And she said, as long as you start looking after yourself. So wifey, thank you for putting me back on track. I changed that night and had a really good hard look at my life. And what I come to realize was everyone around me through the business was using me to do their dirty work. So they'd whinge and bitch to me until they worked me up enough that I would say something to whoever was bothering them or what, whatever was going on at the time. And I thought, this is not going to happen anymore. And that's when my life changed. And I stopped doing that. And it was also around that time that I found out that my husband was having an affair with my so-called friend and secretary. That almost destroyed me. It just devastated me. Um, I still tried to make the marriage work. And I thought that's what I wanted. I didn't want another failed marriage. But there are no failures. They're just lessons in life, as long as we learn from them and what we don't want as well. I sold my restaurant and my half of the transport company to my ex and was at a loss at what to do with my life and everyone would say, what are you going to do? And I'd go, oh, I don't know, I'll just buy a caravan and travel around Australia. started as a joke and once again it was out on the old church pew having a glass of vino and asking my pa for guidance again. I thought, well, why not? I can do that. So the next day I went out, looked at a caravan, paid a deposit and that's where it all began, the Free Fabulous and 50 tour. I was excited and also also very scared and I'm thinking, what am I doing? I was sitting up in bed having a cup of tea a week after I'd bought the caravan thought, shit, 
I've bought a caravan. I've told everyone I'm going to travel around Australia. Can I really do this? I started to doubt myself, but I knew I needed to get me back again, my courage, my independence. For many years, I was always doing things for everybody else, worrying about everybody else, and not thinking about what I wanted. I always put myself last. I knew I, knew I had to change that, so I took the step and went, I'm going to do it. I'm very lucky that I have an amazing bunch of family and friends around me who support me. Um, just before I left home, I saw my amazing mum. Love you, mum. And she's the one who taught me to be strong and taught me to love and respect other people. She said to me, go and do it, darling. And this, if it doesn't work out and you don't like it, there's no shame in coming home. You've always got yourself, you've always got your family here around you. You don't have to prove anything to anybody else but yourself. Um, I wasn't alone. I had my best friend Ellie with me, of course, my blue healer dog. Um, that was two and a half years ago that I set out, well, almost three years ago now, and I'm still out here exploring, seeing this amazing country and meeting some amazing people, and I really love my life, and sometimes I do wonder what the hell I'm doing, but you know what? Life's an adventure, and life is also short. You should live with no regrets and just get out there and do it. I really love the person I am now. And I'm really happy within myself. I've achieved a lot, I've been to a lot of places, and I don't know whether I could ever settle down in one spot again. I think I've got the gypsy in me in the travel. And if you say you can't do it, well, that's just a load of crap. Anyone can do what I'm doing. So get out there and enjoy it. You can see by the lines on the map, that's everywhere I've been in Australia with my caravan driving around. I've done two laps in the last two and a half years, uh, one in both directions. I've been up to the northernmost tip of Australia up here at Cape York. I've been across the Gulf twice. Really, really pretty. Love that across there. I'm right here at King Ash Bay. That's where you find me now. I've been out to the Horizontal Falls. That was for my 50th birthday present and probably one of my most favourite places in Australia. I've done the Gibb River Road and yes, I did it alone. I was told by so many people, mainly men, that, oh, you can't do that as a woman on your own and you'll need extra spares and etc. etc. But anyone out there that knows me knows that's like a red flag telling me I can't do something, so I'm going to do it anyway. The Great Desert Road was also really beautiful, and that's cutting across here. So I've almost cut across the country as well. I've just got to do the next session, which is uh, Plenty Highway across here, and that's going to be my next adventure. Out here on the Tanamai Road, right up to there to the Granite's Mine, really remote. And one of the other places I've been to, which I really love, was the Geographical Centre of Australia, Lambert Centre, and that's right here. It's one of the very few times in my trips that I've actually questioned myself and what the hell I'm doing. It's also why I don't tell my mother what I'm doing till after I've done it, and I certainly don't watch Wolf Creek. I'd left the van back in Colga, and I'd said to them, that's a caravan park slash servo slash pub, that's all that's there, and I said, if I'm not back by six o'clock, send someone in looking for me. So I've headed off, got in, did the 120 kilometre road, turned off on the four wheel drive track, it's about 14 kilometres into the geographical centre. And I'm halfway along and then suddenly hit me and went, what the bloody hell are you doing? You're on your own, it's just you and a dog. Anybody could be in here. That made me a little bit nervous and thinking, what will I do? But we got in there and it was just me and Ellie, nobody else. So the centre is absolutely surreal. Like you sit there and it's just so peaceful. All we can hear are the birds and the wildlife. And it was one of my favourite spots in Australia. Now, there's many beautiful places in Australia and I've still got a lot to see yet. And I love more the remoter areas. People are so much more friendlier. Everybody waves, everyone says hello, everyone's got a smile. So when you're travelling, even if you do it, you can do it on your own. You don't need to be have anyone else with you. Just make sure you tell someone where you're going or remember your sat phone. I have made some amazing friends on my journey around, met some beautiful people who I'm still in contact with and we catch up every now and then somewhere along the road. I've fallen in love again and had my heart broken again. But once again, it was just a lesson in what I didn't want. My first lap around was more about me and finding myself again and realising I only had to make me happy, not everybody else. Not what I thought people wanted me to be. The second lap, I sang my way around, I just organised gigs, worked out where I wanted to go, rang up ahead and organised gigs as I went round. I did a few marriages as I'm a marriage celebrant for family and friends as well. And I ended up back here at King Ash Bay. And for some reason, I just keep coming back to this place. It's just beautiful. It's just, it feels like home. It touches me and I just keep coming back. And I spent three months cooking in the kitchen here, doing seven days a week, 
um, cooking for 20 people up to 150 people a night. So I did that for three months. And then after that, I went down to the Tanami Road as a camp cook with my boyfriend at the time. And we worked seven days a week, three weeks on, one week off, 12 to 15 hour days. I was a camp cook, I was driving trucks, loaders, bobcats, um, then the camp moved another 450 kilometres up the Tanami Road, up near the Granite's Mine, and it's even more remote. But I loved it, just the, the storms, just the landscape and everything around it. And it was here that I actually parted ways with my boyfriend of six months. We are still really great friends and we have lots of great laughs together, but our timing was not right, and you have to be completely happy with yourself before you can be happy with anybody else. So I decided it was time to go home and regroup because I was a bit confused and lost again. and wasn't quite sure what I wanted from life because I'm a planner and I've got to have things organized. So when I got back home, I got some work working for Port Demolition, driving tip trucks. Same thing as my mum used to do 40 years ago. So I was also on the shovel, wheelbarrow and got to smash stuff. It was great fun, I loved it. Tony's an awesome guy to work for. And I was doing something that my mum had done 40 years earlier, gave me a whole new appreciation for what she used to do. So this photo here is a picture of two lady truckers, 40 years apart. It's my mum in 1977 on front of her old Louisville and me in 2017. On one of the jobs, the site manager got chatting to me one day and we we're talking about what I used to do. And I said, I had a furniture removal company. He went, no, no, didn't that lady have a restaurant as well? I went, yeah, that, that's me. And he went, no, no, that can't be you. And I went, yeah, it's me. I had that as the restaurant as well as the transport company. He went, oh, my God, I didn't recognise you. He said, no offence. He said, but you were much bigger then. And he said, you were stressed to the max. You had black circles under your eyes and you were just full go, 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 go. And he said, you look so different. Wouldn't have recognised you. He said, so what did you do? And I said, well, I'm still the same person, but I've changed. My mindset's changed. And that's what happens when you change your mindset, to be positive rather than negative. And you get rid of the negative people in your life and surround yourself with positive people. That's when the magic happens. That's when your life can turn around. I was happy to be home, to see my family and friends. Got myself back together, but even though it was home, it just didn't feel like home anymore. It was too busy, there was too much noise, there wasn't enough stars in the sky, and it was so cold. Um, so once again, I decided I'd pack up my car, van, Ellie, and we'd head back to King Ash Bay. I didn't have a job to come back to, but as my good friend Michelle said to me, Marianne, you will always find a job. You are a go-getter and you can do anything you put your mind to. So I've headed back here. I'm back in my little cottage, which I love. It's not very big, but I'm surrounded by bush and it's so peaceful. I get up in the morning and have a cup of coffee and look out across the paddock and all there is is trees and birds and you'll see the old kangaroo or wallaby jumping around. It is very remote. The nearest town is Catherine which is 750 kilometres away. We get deliveries in once a week of mail and groceries, anything you need you can order it and it gets bought down for you. The recept phone reception can be patchy at times as well as the internet but um, the peace and quiet and the people here make it all worthwhile and you don't really miss all that other stuff you used to have. You realise what you really don't need in your life. So many things we accumulate and for what? We have no, you know, we have no need for them. One of the things I'm most grateful for is Ellie, my dog. Well, my daughter, as I see her. She's now 10 years old and she's been everywhere with me. And she's faithful, she's loyal and loves me just the way I am. It's unconditional love. She's helped me on my journey more than people realize just that. Having that something there, someone with you who you know, loves you no matter what. Now I'm back in King Ash Bay and I'm at peace with my life. It's probably the happiest I've be ever been. I'm happy, I'm content, I like the person that I am. I've learned to love myself again and know that I'm a good person. And I can do anything I want as long as I put my mind to it. I don't know what life has in store for me, but I do know that I'm going to have fun whatever it decides to do, and I will have a go at anything. You are what you think, so think negative, you attract negative. If you think positive, you'll attract positive. Always be kind to people, because you don't know what's going on in their life. Just a few kind words or a smile to someone can change their life. Say hello to a stranger. Give them a wave. I've been doing some personal development 
through reading and, and watching seminars and inspirational speakers and you take from these what you need to take from it and what means something to you. The one thing I've started doing every morning is when I wake up, I say 10 things I'm grateful for. The first one is I'm grateful I wake up. It could be anything. You're grateful for the sun, your dog, you're grateful for your family, grateful for the people who inspire you, anything at all. Um, then I, after that, after I've said 10 things, I try to think of three people that are bothering me and I send them love. Now these days it's really hard for me to even find three people because I'm so happy and content in my life that no one really bothers me anymore. So and then I then I visualize about what I want for my life. I think about what is it I want to achieve? What is it I want to do? So I picture the thing, picture myself actually doing these things and try to feel the emotion that go with that. So it gives me a bit of an incentive and, and what I put out there hopefully will come back to me. So you've got to stop blaming others for your circumstances, for the things in your life that you're not happy with because you create your life and your destiny. You choose what happens to you in your life and every day. You are the only person that can change your life nobody else and your fears stop you from living your life you don't have to go to the extreme that I have but I did just try try changing one thing that that bothers you or one thing you'd like to do look at the world differently and see what happens smile at a stranger say hello and um, you, you'd be surprised about what what will change in your life I'm the happiest at the moment content I've ever been in my life and I'm learning what I want and what I don't want in my life. Um, it's, it's all about getting out of your comfort zone and it can open so many doors and possibilities in your life. You know, like so many times I think I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that, I'm going to write a book, I'm going to write a song, I'm going to do this video and I always stop doing it because I think, oh no, I won't finish it, I won't finish it. And the reason I do that is because I'm frightened of failing and thinking, well, if I don't do it, I can't fail, can I? But I've already failed because I didn't try. So now I'm all about putting myself out there, having a go at anything, or well, probably a little bit more than what I used to have a go at, but um, you know, it's, it's all about believing in yourself and knowing that you can achieve anything. So if you think that your thoughts can't change anything, have a look around the room that you're in right now. Actually have a real good look. Look at everything that's in that room and think about every single thing you're looking at started as a thought. So if you think thoughts aren't powerful, Someone thought about making that TV and then they created it just from one thought. So if you think one negative thought, it's going to bring you down. Think a positive thought. Try to turn, turn things around for yourself. So, and if people are bothering you or something's happening in your life, my favourite saying at the moment is, not my circus, not my monkeys. So I don't let it get to me where I used to. And I'm doing what I'm passionate about. I'm doing videos again, I'm singing. I love my singing, bringing joy to people through my music and my voice. And I try to live my life uh, the best that I can. And if I can make one person smile or take a chance or change one thing in their life, change their way of thinking, to love more, to laugh more, or do something that puts them out of their comfort zone, then I've achieved what I set out to do is to make a difference in someone's life for the better. You don't have to go to the extreme that I have traveling around. Oh, you can if you want to, but it, it might be, oh, you don't, you don't ever want to go out and eat a restaurant by yourself. Well, go do it. What's going to happen? Someone might look at you. Who cares? You know, like, and don't say, people say, oh, I can't do what you're doing. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you might have a house and a mortgage. Well, guess what? Rent the house out. Put people in there. Go travel. Go do something. Because what I found out here on the road, so many people wait until they retire and then they're too old and they can't do all those things that they wanted to do like go walk up that mountain or or go look at things or try things and or they're too ill to do anything so don't wait until you're much much older to all my family and friends out there who have stood by me supported me and encouraged me i thank you and without your love and support and an occasional kick up the butt, thanks Michelle, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. So thank you for believing in me and loving me and just for who I am. I am a phoenix and I will continue to rise and I'll continue to write new chapters of love and life. And remember, your life is what you ask for and what you believe. So love yourself first 
be grateful for what you have and then you can appreciate all that life has to offer you. So I just want to say thank you all for watching this and thank you for encouraging me to put something like this together. Everyone says I should write a book. Well, maybe I will. But um, thank you all again for taking the time to watch this. My name is Marianne Delaforce and may the force be with you. Enjoy.